Hi, this is Jordan Ramirez, and normally I host my podcast show, Film Talk with Jordan Ramirez. Now I am hosting a special show for my podcast, Film Talk with Jordan Ramirez, mini show Jordan Ramirez Recommends. The mini shows are now airing every Monday at 12 p.m. as part of the Film Talk with Jordan Ramirez podcast. So without further ado, you're listening to a Film Talk with Jordan Ramirez mini sode My recommended film is the historical melodrama San Francisco from 1936, directed by W.S. Van Dyke, starring Clark Gable, Jeanette MacDonald, and Spencer Tracy. Set in the year 1906, in San Francisco, California, resides the owner of a nightclub in the Barbary Coast named Blackie Norton, played by Clark Gable. Blackie one day receives a visitor who had just arrived from a theater that was burnt down named Mary Blake, played by Jeanette MacDonald. While Mary may have the singing chops, her highbrow sensibility unfortunately would not be acceptable at Blackie's nightclub. Blackie has a best friend whom he knew since they were kids named Tim Mullen, played by Spencer Tracy. Mullen ended up becoming a priest and tries to convince Blackie to have faith since Blackie is now a non-believer. While at the same time Mary is working at Blackie's joint, impresario Jack Burley, played by Jack Holt, also takes notice of Mary Blake and decides to have her sign up at an opera house that he owns and operates. The film is a delightful and nostalgic look at what the studio system era was like when they were grooming their biggest stars, especially in a studio like MGM during the 1930s decade. As I watch the film, I mostly like the performances put on by Spencer Tracy and Jeanette MacDonald. I always feel so comfortable when Spencer Tracy is on camera and he delivers his line so professionally that you don't see that much in today's Hollywood movie stars. Jeanette MacDonald is also in the same roster, and that while she is given some of the best musical numbers, albeit if you can withstand her high-pitched operatic singing notes that can make your eardrums bleed or go deaf, she puts on a dramatic turn for her performance as Mary Blake that I felt she was able to deliver in this film. While Clark Gable is the star of the film, I felt that beneath his tough machismo image that there are some moments when he does shine on the screen. Those moments to me occur with his co-star Jeanette MacDonald. An example is when Mary is in Blackie's office and she tries to make him be a believer of God and of the church, even though Blackie turned his back on religion. Or another scene in which Blackie was asking Mary how long she had been in San Francisco and she replied that she wasn't there for very long since she was originally from Colorado and was looking for work after the fire. One of the best musical song numbers is the main title song, San Francisco, with music by Bronislaw Caper and Walter Yearman and lyrics by Gus Kahn. It has become so synonymous with the film that it later was adopted by the city as one of its anthem. The film's idea originated from Robert Hopkins, which was later adapted into screenplay form by Anita Luz, one of the few female scriptwriters working in Hollywood during its golden age at the studio system. The original idea was to make a story based on the life of Wilson Misner, whom Robert Hopkins and Anita Luz knew back then. Anita Luz. Well back in the gay 90s, Wilson Misner was at the beginning of a career of a superb bravado. Hoppy and I had been children there at a period when Wilson Misner had held forth. I had been unaware of his existence, but Hoppy had been more fortunate. He had been a messenger boy on the Barbary Coast where Wilson had run a gambling casino. Hoppy had never ceased to look on Wilson Misner as an idol. Once the script had taken shape, however, tragedy struck. Irving Thalberg, who took a liking to their story idea, had died of pneumonia at the age of 37. So Louis B. Mayer, the head of the studio, gave the producing assignment to Bernard Hyman, who was Thalberg's disciple. Hyman's first order of business was to bring W.S. Van Dyke to direct the project. Van Dyke was known for his fast-paced and quick shooting style and was given the nickname One Take Woody. Next to come to the project was Jeanette MacDonald, who was known for her performances in light operettas for the studio. But by this time, Jeanette wanted to forge her own path to find a dramatic role that would suit her, and this project turned out to be the one. Once MacDonald was cast, she was determined that her co-star in the film for the male lead be Clark Gable. Gable, however, did not want to be in the film. 
He heard rumors about McDonald being a prima donna and was not well known for being around actresses who were spoiled or pampered. It wouldn't be until Louis B. Mayer later got involved that he started to pressure Clark Gable with a suspension if he didn't take the role. Gable begrudgingly accepted the role. Spencer Tracy was a newcomer to the studio. After having just finished filming on Fury from 1936 for Fritz Lang, he was cast to play Father Mullen in this film. Tracy was hesitant to do it, but Van Dyke persuaded Tracy to play the role since he was the key to the film. After further thinking into the role, Tracy accepted the part. Production began on February 14th and ended on May 14th of 1936, mostly shot on the MGM backlot and sound stages in Culver City. During the production of San Francisco, McDonald and Gable never got along during their romantic scenes, but Tracy and Gable got along really well during production and formed a friendship. One of the most important sequences of the film is the climactic recreation of the earthquake. The job went to A. Arnold Gillespie and James Basevi. Their solution was to build hydraulic platforms which the actors were standing on in the sound stages that was later pulled apart by cables with hoses underneath gushing water to simulate the broken mains. The film was released on June 26, 1936 and was a critical and commercial success at the box office. The film was nominated for six Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Sound, Best Assistant Director, Best Original Story, Best Director, and Best Actor for Spencer Tracy. The film would ultimately win for Best Sound to Douglas Shearer. All I can say is that as an entertainment film from the golden age of Hollywood, I admire the film even if it does feel a little bit corny with some of the dialogue scenes and a bit slow at some points. I think of it as one of the best films that I highly recommend for its performances, direction, and the climactic earthquake scene beautifully recreated to watch and enjoy. On the next episode of Film Talk with Jordi Ramirez, we examine a French film from the 1980s, Vagabond, directed by Anya Svarda. That's coming up this Friday on Film Talk with Jordi Ramirez at 4pm on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Radio Public. This has been a Film Talk with Jordi Ramirez minisode. Tune into the minisodes every Monday at 12 p.m. and Film Talk with Jordi Ramirez every Friday at 4 p.m. on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Radio Public. If you are on Spotify, make sure to like and subscribe to keep this show going, and make sure to recommend to your friends and family members to tune into this podcast. I also have my own YouTube channel, Film Talk with Jordi Ramirez, where you can watch my video podcasts or my minisodes, and make sure to like and subscribe. And until then, I'll see you at the movies. Thank you.